Hey, so the idea that the universe may be controlled or ruled by something other than matter, so detectable luminous matter, was first proposed by a guy called Fritz Zwicky. He was an astronomer, but also just a guy. And in the early 1920s, so really not that long ago at all, Edwin Hubble had discovered that nebulae were actually distant galaxies. And then a decade after that, Earl Pal Fritz made it his mission to measure the overall mass of the coma cluster of galaxies. He used a mathematical model called the Virial Theorem, which, you know, I wouldn't have, but each to their own. But that allowed him to calculate the overall mass of the relative velocities of individual cluster galaxies. And to Fritz's amazement, his calculation suggested that the cluster contained roughly 400 times more mass than what he expected based on the combined light of its stars. Fritz called this ridiculous amount of unseen matter dark matter. And you know, new science being new science and not generally well understood by the masses, no one really cared. Like they were just like, yeah, so? But, but by the 1950s, new technology created new ways of detecting non-luminous material, so dark matter. It was so god darn obvious that huge amounts of matter were too cool to glow in visible light, but still radiate in infrared and radio wavelengths. And as scientists began to learn about the visible and invisible structure of our galaxy and others, the amount of missing mass fell substantially. So finally, 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 the president... <laughs> The presence of dark matter was recognized in the 1970s after our girl, Vera Rubin, mapped the velocity of stars orbiting our galaxy, the Milky Way, and she measured the distribution of its mass. She showed us, um, dense folk, I guess, that huge amounts of mass are distributed beyond the galaxy's visible confines in an area now known as the galactic halo. But now, of course, maybe unless you're a flat earther, it is widely accepted that dark matter constitutes around 84.5% of the mass in the universe. Any ideas or hopes even that it might actually be normal matter in hard to detect forms like rogue planets or black holes obviously hasn't been proven, but it is now considered the dark matter is made up from weakly interacting massive particles or WIMPs, because science is cruel. But the properties of these hypothetical subatomic particles or WIMPs are still very much unknown. They are not only dark and transparent, but they also don't interact with normal matter or radiation except through gravity. But, but since the late 1990s, it has become known that even dark matter is dwarfed by dark energy. So this phenomenon is the force accelerating the expansion of the universe. And of course, like almost everything else in the world, its nature is still unknown. It has been spitballed that it may be a super important part of space-time itself, or a fifth fundamental force known as quintessence. So dark energy is thought to account for 68.3% of all the energy in the universe, while the energy of dark matter is thought to account for 26.8%, so 95.1% in total. And our normal matter only accounts for a baby amount at 4.9%. But going back quick to our old mate Fritz, he was a super cool guy. He puts everyone in the world to shame and makes me feel like I should probably have like an existential crisis at any moment. But he was born in Bulgaria and he moved out to the US in his 20s to work at Caltech. And besides his work on dark matter, he is also well known for his work on massive exploding stars. Himself and his friend Walter Bade were the first to demonstrate the existence of neutron stars that are in between in size to white dwarfs and black holes and they coined the term supernova for the ginormous stellar explosions from which neutron stars are born. And, and, and by showing that one class of supernova always reach the same max brightness when they explode, they also created a way of measuring the distance to far off galaxies independently of Hubble's law, paving the way for the later discovery of dark energy. So to recap everything quick, the outer regions of galaxies rotate more quickly than their visible mass suggests that they should. So this means that they must have additional hidden mass that would explain the rotation. This additional mass is known as dark matter and accounts for 26.8% of all energy. And the universe is expanding at an ever increasing rate. Expansion is caused by dark energy, which accounts for 90, no, which accounts for 68.3% of all energy. And overall, that means that just 4.9% of the universe's energy is accounted for by visible matter. 
and 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 if this has given you a thirst for wanting to learn more luckily for us brilliant have sponsored this video and they offer many courses in science including one that shows how we measure the universe starting from way back when with the greeks and on top of all that if you have a hefty commute to work like me and you want to use that time productively brilliant's new offline courses will allow you to do exactly that you can download any of their dozens of interactive courses through the mobile app and you'll be able to solve fascinating problems in math, science and computer science no matter where you are or how spotty your internet connection. What's awesome about these courses is that they're all totally interactive. You'll experiment with pendulum clocks to master the physics of motion, use rockets to model algebraic functions and learn probability by playing Xeno Blackjack. So if you want to support the channel and get unlimited access to all the Brilliant's in-depth math and science courses, you can head over to brilliant.org forward slash science with Katie to get 20% off their annual premium subscription. And that's it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, hit subscribe. A big thank you to my patrons on Patreon and thank you for watching. Bye!